Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything. So don't even ask. Seriously. How's it growing everyone? Today we have a little something special for you and class is in session. So grab your notebooks and pencils because we're going to talk about lighting, specifically PAR. What it is, why it's relevant, and what you can do with the numbers that pop up on our new PAR meter from Apogee Instruments. point you know we're trying to make this our full-time jobs but YouTube is well, YouTube when it comes to cannabis despite this we continue to find ourselves surrounded by nothing but love and support from this community if you did want to support the channel a little more the best way to do that is through our patreon with a private discord additional in-depth videos Patreon exclusive merch and live streams, or even the chance to smoke face to face with the buds, every tier gets something. The amount of support we've already received has been absolutely mind blowing, but we wanted to take some time out to show our appreciation for our newest patrons. So, a big shout out and an official thank you to Terrell Teague. Mr. Cody the One. We love you guys. Really. All right. Let's get back to it. All right, guys. So we have an exciting learning experience for you today. From science and math to the grow room and lights. And there's even a few diagrams in here. Like we said, today's episode is all about PAR. So where do we start? Well, it stands for photosynthetically active radiation. Essentially, it's the wavelength of light that falls within the spectrum that plants can use for photosynthesis. In fact, this might be the perfect place to start. After all, if we're going to learn about lighting and PAR, we might as well understand why. And it all boils down to photosynthesis. Yes, most of us know that plants make food from sunlight, but let's look a little deeper. Literally, photosynthesis takes place mainly by two cycles within the plant's vegetation. First thing you need is light. Whether that's the sun or your indoor grow lights, the photons raining down onto the plant will be absorbed by the chlorophyll and captured within the leaves. And this is where the fun begins. Okay, so you remember those two cycles? Well, the first are called the light-dependent reactions. The second is the Kelvin cycle, or light-independent reactions. Within the first cycle, two chemicals are made, ATP, then NADPH. Think of these as nothing more than vehicles. Vehicles for what? Well, to transport additional energy and electrons to the second cycle. Once those chemicals are depleted of their payload, they convert to a different molecule as they are now empty and ready to be loaded back up. And around and around they go, supplying the necessary energy to power the Kelvin cycle. Here, the food, or more specifically sugar, is made. As the plant takes in carbon dioxide, the gas is then split apart and used in this process to synthesize sugar. As many of you know, the byproduct resulting from these reactions is oxygen. So when is this all relevant? Well, PAR is the only light that plants can use for this process. And yes, that means there are spectrums of light that plants can't see or use, and some that can even kill, damage it, or stunt growth. So PAR, or photosynthetically active radiation, falls within the range of 400 to 700 nanometers. 
nanometers is simply the unit used to measure the wavelengths of light. So as long as the number falls within that range, the plants can use it for photosynthetic purposes. This is particularly relevant in our tents. Why? Because it can be measured, and even better yet, with this information, we can figure out exactly how to set our lights for each stage of the grow. Now we get to the good part, how we measure lighting that falls within the power spectrum. Essentially, you have to know two more acronyms, PPFD and micromoles. PPFD, or Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density, is the amount of light photons that hit a given surface, usually the plant's canopy, in one second. This number is measured in units called micromoles. Although the phrase PPF and PPFD are commonly used interchangeably, what we're really after here is the PPFD. While the PPFD is the amount of photons that fall on a certain area, PPF, or photosynthetic photon flux, is the entire amount of photons released by the light source. We don't care about that. We care about how much light is hitting our plants. The higher we can get the PPFD while keeping the plant healthy, the bigger the yield. But it has its limits. First, you have to have everything else on point, which can be broken down into what Dr. Bruce Bugby over at Apogee refers to as the nine parameters. Essentially, the lights, temps, humidity, wind, and CO2 levels, along with the root zone temp, nutrients, water, and oxygen in the medium, all have to be ideal to push your plants further. If one is lagging behind or lacking, the plant will be stunted. If you try to push one parameter farther without adjusting the rest to match, this additional input will also stunt the plant. Second is the law of diminishing returns. We all know that plants can burn, but like we said, if you dial in each one of the nine parameters as you dial up your lights more and more, you can increase your yields to a certain point. If you were to keep going, the lights will be up so high you'll be spending so much money on electricity that it now costs more to grow the plants than they're worth. The increase in the ratio between light intensity and yield go up quickly in the beginning before it slows and eventually costs so much to grow that it's not worth it. All right, so we got the why and the how. Next is the what we need to measure our PPFD. This is where what most people call a PAR meter comes in. Ours is the new EPAR sensor made by Apogee Instruments. Well, we know what PAR is, but EPAR? Abbreviated, it stands for Extended Photosynthetically Active Radiation. In short, it's a sensor that reads an extended range as opposed to your typical PAR meter. This is where Apogee stands above the rest. You see, typical PAR meters only read between the range of 400 and 700 micromoles. However, Dr. Bruce Bugby over at Apogee explains that there was a need to widen this range. Come to find out, the far red spectrum, previously thought to be outside of the PAR range, is equally relevant to the photosynthetic process as those wavelengths that fall within the range. Those of us who grow indoors can tell you that LED grow lights now all come with far red bulbs. As is the case throughout history, definitions can be, and are, frequently adjusted. This is exactly why the new EPAR meter reads PPFD within the 400 to 750 range. This allows the sensor to catch and read reds that used to be thought of as irrelevant, ultimately meaning we get a more accurate representation of what's going on. Now, let's see this thing in action. First, you'll want something black. We're using black foam board, but you can even flip the bottom liner of your tent over if you don't have anything else. Chances are, it's black. Next, it's time to create the grid. Using a ruler of some kind, evenly mark out how wide you want each of your boxes to be. We're going with six inches. This divides easily into our test area, a four x four tent. Feel free to use whatever size boxes you would like to. Include more boxes for a more accurate reading or less for a more general reading that takes less time. Just make sure they're all the same size. The choice is yours. Once that's done, it's time to get to work. Set the light to the manufacturer's recommended height and then comes the numbers. It's recommended that you draw out your grid on a piece of paper or notebook in order to keep track of the numbers. Whatever the meter says in that box, you write it in the corresponding box in your notebook. 
Once that's done, the general rule of thumb is to measure one unit down and two units up. What this means is that you're gonna run the same test three more times. Ultimately, you have to choose the distance that the light is going to differ between these tests. We went with three inches just to keep it small. So, say the recommended height is 18 inches. We would take par readings at 18 inches, then down three inches for 15. Remember, one unit down, two up. So from there, we raise it three inches above the initial height, which is 21 inches, and then take another reading three more inches higher at 24 inches. After all four par ratings have been taken, the original reading, then one down and two up, you have all the necessary information to make informed decisions about your light, how high to hang it, and at what intensity to set it at. These numbers also give us the ability to find the average PPFD for any given light, its ratio of uniformity, or how even the coverage is, the total par, and even the light's efficiency. All that aside, let's get to the fun stuff. Recommended par levels. To first figure this out, we need to learn one last acronym. It's called DLI, and it stands for the Daily Light Integral. This number represents the amount of light a plant needs in a day, and is usually expressed as a range, showing both the bare minimum and the absolute maximum the plant can take. The max can actually be higher, but only takes place if other parameters are artificially adjusted, mainly CO2. So the DLI for cannabis is 20 to 40 moles. Okay, so you remember when we talked about micromoles, the unit that PPFD is measured in? Well, one million micromoles equals one mole. So 20 to 40 moles equates to 20 million to 40 million micromoles. Either way you look at it, this means that the absolute bare minimum DLI a plant needs for an entire day is 20 mole. The absolute maximum is 40 mole. And this would typically only be possible by someone very refined and growing with their nine parameters all dialed in. But remember, this is the daily light integral. This is the amount of light a plant needs for an entire day. Our sensor measures PPFD for just one second. So how do we get to what our PAR meter should be reading? Fortunately for us, it's not hard to convert. Just take your target DLI and divide it until you're down to seconds. For example, 30 mole is equivalent to 30 million micromoles. Now we start breaking it down. How long is your day? Well, this is your light cycle. If you run your lights for 18.6, you would have an 18 hour day period. Likewise, 12.12 would be a 12 hour day. Remember, these numbers are what a plant needs per day. So if you're giving them 18 hours of light, this is where you start. Take your 30 million and divide it by how many hours your plant gets of light every day. Let's say it's 18. 30 million micromoles divided by 18 is 1,666,666. But this is ours. We have to go further. So divide that number by 60 minutes. That is, after all, how many minutes are in each hour? This would give you 27,777. We're trying to get it down to seconds here, so we divide one last time by 60 seconds in each minute. That gives us 462.9 micromoles needed every second of an 18 hour light schedule to achieve its targeted DLI of 30 mole per day. However, this still doesn't tell us what to set the lights to, or even at what stage for that matter. Luckily, there's plenty of suggested ranges out there explaining what a typical PPFD should read at each stage of growth. Taking things like lighting and grower skill into consideration, there is some wiggle room for everyone to find the best intensity for their grow and ability. For clones, you typically want the lights between 100 and 125 PPFD. Seeds should be set between 100 and 300, while early veg should read 200 to 300. Late veg, 400 to 600. Just a note here, it has been suggested to leave auto flowers at this rate until harvest. Longer 18 hour days means more time to spread out their total DLI over. 
If you are growing photos though, your light will go down from 18 hours in veg to 12-12 as you flip to flower. From here, early flowers should fall between 700 and 800, and this is where most people might want to stop with light intensity. Beyond 800 is typically only seen by more skilled growers who have their nine parameters completely figured out and running at max speed. If this is the case for you, then the recommended rates for late veg are 800 to 1000. Ultimately, 1000 PPFD, or right around that mark, is thought to be the maximum before the law of diminishing returns starts to have an effect. Above this, you typically need to start raising the CO2 levels and the slowing increase in yield makes it so that growing under these conditions really don't justify the means. So there you have it, all things PAR. We learned what PAR is, what's relevant, what to measure, how to measure it, how to convert DLI into PPFD, and what your PAR reading should look like in whatever stage of growth your plants are in. Good things to come, guys. Now that we've teamed up with Apogee, we're set to get a more detailed look at our equipment. As you can guess, you'll soon start seeing us release a PAR review of lights from every one of Mars Hydro's LED lines. From the TS series all the way up to the FC with their Samsung diodes. In fact, next episode, we're doing just that with the brand new Mars Hydro FCE 8000. We'll be dropping the unboxing, review, and PAR readings as well as taking a look at wattage usage. So look out for that. Of course, you guys know you can always find us on Instagram for additional content. And if you're looking for a way to support the channel more, the best way you can do that is through our Patreon. From a private Discord and additional content to exclusive merch and even a chance to smoke with the buds, every tier gets something. Until the next one, keep learning, keep growing. Catch, Catch you later, later guys. guys.